Good morning everyone. Um, thank you for all your contributions so far. It's been really, really great, fascinating um, reading and, and listening to your thoughts. Um, I have um, a response to something that Jake Fines has posted recently um, with that lovely view of his cattle coming in to listen to his wise words. Um, and he was talking about the importance of large herbivores um, as a, um, an ecological um, factor in our in our landscape. Um, and I completely agree with every, everything Jake was saying. Um, but it brings up for me a question, um, and it's a question I've asked before and I've never got an answer. I don't know if there is an answer. Certainly there isn't an easy one, I know that. But I would love to know your thoughts on it. Um, and that is that... that there is a number, there must be a number um, for the, the number of cattle that we can rear on the island of Great Britain in a way that is ethical and sustainable, um, high welfare, um, biodiversity enhancing, landscape enhancing um, and carbon sequestering, um, ticking all those boxes, there is a number that we can rear that way. Um, allowing, assuming we're allowing space for other forms of agriculture and other land uses. Um, that number has to be limited by the area that we have available. Um, and I suspect um, that number is is fewer than we are currently, um, the number of cattle that we are currently rearing. Um, so th that would mean a smaller meat and dairy industry. Um, and it would also mean managing public demand um, in such a way that we consume all that we produce, nothing's wasted, um, and we don't need to import um, lesser quality products from, from abroad. I'm sure all of you are horrified in the same way that I am when you see footage of cattle in multi-storey prisons, effectively, um, in you know, American-style feedlots, um, just horrendous, intensive, um, cruel conditions. Um, I, I would never want to eat or drink a product that comes from that kind of farming, um, and I'm sure it would horrify an awful lot of people. Um, so, what is that number? And how do we manage public demand for that, what effectively now would be viewed as a premium product, but how do we make that the norm um, for, for, the, for Great Britain? Um, and how do we manage demand in such a way that, that doesn't come across as, as complete anathema to, the, to the, the, um, the sector? I mean, for a, I completely understand that for a beef or dairy farmer, um, any suggestion that we should be eating less meat or less dairy um, sets all sorts of alarm bells ringing and I you know I, I, I understand that as well um, but um, but as I see it that is what we need to be doing um, so so finding that number would be a start um, how much can we produce um, in a way that um, is not going to harm the environment um, and uh, and do it without you know without those cramped kinds of conditions um, without creating the problem of slurry, for example. Um, I know there have been several cases um, through this last winter of, of slurry being being spread at exactly the wrong time when there when there is rain coming um, and it's ending up in the rivers and there's a whole, you know, a whole other tranche of problems associated with that. Um, and so we need an extensive meat and dairy sector um, how much can we produce and then how do we go about ensuring that that is still a profitable way for those farmers to um, to operate um, and produce a product that people will um, enjoy and value um, and maybe consume less of but but in a way that um, not only that they enjoy the product but but they're aware of, of what goes into producing it um, I would love your thoughts on that I know it's not a simple question but um, but I feel like Getting that number, that n number of how much we, we can produce sustainably um, would be a start.